So we've been talking a lot about these solutions. Let's actually see some of this in action. Let's dig into some code and a real use case, okay? And so what I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna show off today is combining a bunch of our solutions, Identity Vault and offline storage and our camera Premiere plugin to build an encrypted image storage app in, in really just a handful of lines of code. So let me escape out of here and switch over to Ionic Studio. Um, Mac, what can you tell us about Ionic Studio while I'm pulling this up? Yeah, so Ionic Studio is our new environment that allows uh, Ionic developers to really quickly and rapidly build out applications utilizing uh, Ionic 4 and Angular, the newest version of our framework here. Um, so you've got the ability to like visually do all of your pages, kind of drag components out of the screen. We're launching yep. like 50 new drag and drop that patterns that you can use. You can do all of your custom componentry, like everything's at your fingertips so you can go in there. And really without reading any Ionic documentation, like you're able to go in and build an Ionic app and mm -hmm. everything is just at your fingertips. So I use it personally on, on one of my apps that I'm building and I love it. Um, so not really what the demo is about today. So I'll get off my <laughs> studio high horse and let Neko show you the native stuff. Yeah, thanks Matt. All right, everyone. So what are we talking about here? So when we think about, uh, you know, use cases, industries, who would want to build encrypted image storage? Storage. When we really think about that, there's all types of things. What I'm channeling here in this case would be a travel agency, you know, really anyone that needs to scan like a driver's license or an ID. There's lots of um, situations where we need to be able to read your address, your name, your, your social security perhaps, and, and of course, that's really critical, very important personal information. So we, we need to make sure if we're building apps that leverages that, um, not only do, to protect ourselves and our teams, our companies, but our users' data is increasingly, especially in this age, more and more important. Yeah, and if you're not be undersold, right? Yeah, and if you're in an industry like healthcare, like that is a legal requirement. Mm -hmm. Like you are required legally to, on the hook to get it right, <laughs> to yes. get it right, and to encrypt that data <laughs> in a way that people don't have access to. Yep. So, you know, what I've got here on the left and, and I've, what I have is my iPhone connected to the screen here, connected up to um, studio here in our, in our little demo app is showing off a, a quick example of, you know, what would happen if we um, needed to scan, maybe going through a travel queue, need to scan our, our driver's license, maybe like think of TSA in the US, things like that. And um, what I'm going to do is show off kind of scanning that a, a, a driver's license. Um, Matt wanted me to use, asked if I would use my own, and unfortunately I would not, because that would not he be was not willing <laughs> to share his real driver's license. So, so I created a fake one, and we'll kind of walk through that. Um, so already you see on the left-hand side, I've got my travel ID app here, um, asking you to scan your ID to get started. So that's going to read that image data and store that, encrypt it, um, not only the picture, but uh, your information as well. So um, you'll notice here, I've already got the app open. And already a bunch of things have happened uh, behind the scenes seamlessly to the user, to, you, know, behind, you know, really hidden to the end user. And let's kind of briefly look at what that is. So I've got an image service class here in my Angular app that kind of wraps all of the, a little bit of Identity Vault, but it's specifically our offline storage solution that again provides that encrypted database powered by Couch, Couchbase Lite. And what we're able to do here is when this, when the app opens, I'm instantializing, I'm initializing that, that Couchbase database. And the key part of the encryption is right here. So what, we, what it requires is an encryption key. So some sort of GUID that um, will, it'll use to encrypt that data and store it at rest. And so you'll see here, I'm actually calling out to a different service, um, following development best practices here, kind of separating concerns as much as possible. And you know, saying, okay, we'll go, when I set that encryption key, that'll be used for the lifetime of this app let's go retrieve that from somewhere. And that somewhere is Identity Vault. And so there's a lot of, what's really great is identity, I mentioned not long ago, that from a couple, one or two lines of code, I'm able to um, use that secure storage feature for this express purpose. So you can think about, there's a lot of ways that you might generate this GUID for on a per user basis. So you'll see I'm, for the sake of simplicity here, I'm not logging into the app, but you could imagine that you'd, you'd retrieve this uh, encryption key from a server, you know, one of your web APIs after the, after the user, me, him, whoever has logged in, it'll be unique for, for us and, and already generated from some other fashion, right? Yeah, I don't or, want to share my token with you. No, and I, and I 
it's same ditto. <laughs> so what I've done here though for simplicity and, st and still could be um, cryptographically secure is using the um, built-in crypto API to generate a random GUID on the fly for this app user. Um, and then we'll of course store that GUID and reuse it every time that you log into the app. Um, so that's you know not as important as um, and powerful as what we can see with Identity Vault, which is when I call the encryption key method, I'm retrieving it from secure storage. And if I don't have it, I'm creating that random good, of course, live and, and then storing that. So really just a couple lines of code to implement that logic. And it's going to be secured at rest in Apple Keychain and Android as well. Yeah. So mm -hmm. now just to, just to back up, uh, mm -hmm. you know, this random good here, like what we're accomplishing with this, if we go back to the image service, is yep. we're giving that to the database to use as its encryption key. So what we were talking about earlier, where like you've got the thing that has the ability to decrypt your whole database, that's the thing we just generated, you know, put in Identity Vault. Yep, very nice, yep. So with that, you know, our database is instantiated, we're ready to go. Um, so let's take a look and actually scan my ID, as it were, um, and, and look at this. So if we look to the left here on my iPhone, I'm gonna tap the scan ID button. And here is my Victor's Wisconsin driver's license. This um, is a really good fake, I've got to say. It look, I know, it's just, the, I printed on the best quality paper available. You didn't even cut it. Nope. <laughs> so, you know, just really simple example here. We've got, you see address, the name. I would not want my information out in any old app, right? We want to be able to secure this. So I'm going to say use photo and what happens here is you see automatically I'm displaying the image on the, on the screen because maybe you need to show it to your security agent or you're passing through security somewhere. And I've also, um, you know, this have parsed the, all the information off the image. So to be clear, this, this is somewhat faked in this example because we're more concerned about storing this image. Um, it's kind of outside the, the scope here to actually, you know, parse that image and render it and all that stuff. But the gist of it is here, right? We we're able to display that using the camera plugin, quickly take a, a, a photo. And if we had multiple for an agent, you know, scanning through a lot of these, we could move quickly and, and move on, right? But let's look at what's actually happening after that camera, um, uh, you know, that, that photo has been captured, right? So we're back in our image service. Um, and the really interesting part here is we're, um, we're Okay, so we're using the offline storage service to store that image. So really quick, straightforward. Um, if you've worked with any of the Cordova Capacitor APIs before, you know how simple it is to just configure some settings for capturing an image and opening that this opens the device um, camera. And then what we do is we take those that image, all those bits and bytes and all that data and store it into uh, offline storage. So what's really great about this, you'll notice there's nothing specific about encryption here and whatnot, but we're able to load this data into a new document and then call database.save and automatically that's encrypted at rest. If we close the app, if we go navigate away, none of that data is gonna be compromised. Yeah, effectively your encryption is configured once at that database initialization, initialization level. Mm -hmm. And then yep. you don't have to worry about it throughout the rest of your application. Like when you're programming a specific feature, like you're just doing gets and sets and queries on the database and everything is happening automatically from an encryption standpoint. Yep. Um, even down to that, like I mentioned earlier, like a 15 minute timeout that locks everything. Like we're gonna, all we're of gonna look at that accessible. too, yeah, that's cool. a good reminder. So yeah, and then of course, when we come back to the app later, like I'm just storing, I'm just displaying this immediately over here. Um, but with just a few lines of code, we can query and retrieve it out of the database. And again, without myself as a developer having to know the guts and internals of how that works, we know that it's secure. And if I hadn't provided that right down here, the correct encryption key or had wired that up, I would be blocked even as a developer, of course, from retrieving that from my device. So we'd see all kinds of errors and run into issues there. Um, a quick note on the identity vault side of things, which I really, really love, is I'll go back to my device here. If I, you know, talk about like an additional layer of protection. So you've got your um, other options like uh, single sign-on, face ID, all those kind of things. Um, but we have as well, if we put this into the app background, you'll notice, I'll do that again. I'll come back and forth a little bit. So I'm gonna put that in the app background. You see how I've got Google up on the side that's still you know, rendering whatever latest news, the settings as well, that actually is, is blanked out. But this one as well is all blocked. So 
you know, this is a classic use case of, um, and really it's just this main configuration here, hide screen on background. So anytime it goes in the background, or again, as to Matt's point, you can lock after five minutes, 15 minutes, whatever you want. I'm safe from, um, you know, someone looking over my shoulder or any, any kind of situation where, again, this is incredibly sensitive data. When I go back to the app, there you go, it's loaded. Yeah, so I didn't have to do any custom development for that. That's provided on the box. Yeah, it's literally just a line of config. Mm -hmm. And right where here. we've seen this adopted the most is actually banks, right? Like if oh, you yeah. have a yep. banking application on your phone, you probably already know that your banking application does this, right? You mm -hmm. don't want, for instance, like somebody just scrolling through your list of apps or something like that, like in your bank balances there. Um, so a lot of banks utilize that hide screen feature as well. Yep. Yep, perfect. All right. So at a high level, we've got an encrypted image storage solution built with just a handful of lines of code and a couple awesome Ionic native solutions. Let's head back over here. How yes. about a little recap, Mr. Matt? Yeah, so I wanted to recap, uh, kind of like we did for the stories a little bit ago, like what went into play here? What did what? So we combined Identity Vault, offline storage, and our Premier Camera plugin specifically. Now, like we could have also thrown in the entire authentication piece um, and a few other things, but like we wanted to keep it simple. So we used these three for the example. So first we generated that encryption token. That was the code where we saw like you could do that on the server, you could do it locally. We, we personally used the Windows Crypto API. And then uh, we stored that, we gave it to Identity Vault and say, you keep this thing secure for us. Uh -huh. We're gonna come back and ask for it later, but you know, you handle that. Yep. We then took a picture using our camera plugin with that easy config object you might have seen as well, just said, hey, here's our settings for the picture. We then took that and stored it in the local database with a simple dot set, right? Mm -hmm. So we just said, hey, take it. We don't really care how the encryption works at that point, it's just going to happen. Then we showed off, you minimize the screen, we hit everything, right? Maybe we lock the vault after that 15 minutes, we encrypt everything, we put it back at rest, we hide it behind biometrics, anything like that, preventing access to the data, even if someone gets their physical hands on the device. Yep. So we require that to be unlocked. After that's unlocked via whatever means, we now have access to that encryption token again. We can go back to the database and call it .git and we'll actually get the image. Uh, and retrieve data and continue using everything. So really it's kind of like the circle, right? Like, do I have access to the token? No, let me go get it. Let me unlock the identity vault, get the, you know, through biometrics, get that, use it to decrypt the database, and now I've got that full query support, even with the files, like mm -hmm. you showed with storing an image. Yep, awesome. 